Good morning. Let us pause for a moment to pray. Gracious Mother, Father, Creator God, we are thankful for your many expressions of love, the many messages that we can receive through one another, through music, the lyrics, the sounds. We pray that this message, this talk this morning, inspires each one of us in the way that it needs to, to be heard as you deliver it through me. Let it speak your words. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for letting me be with you. We are talking about a story that perhaps many of you know. Do you know the Velveteen Rabbit? Hmm? No? Some yes? All right. Well, hopefully I won't bore those of you who know it. And for those of you who don't, it'll be enticing to read the whole story because I'm not going to read it to you. (laughs) But I am going to reference it. This, I think, is a beautiful story about the law or the power of intention, the law of manifestation, that what we think we hold in our thoughts, and through that we have our beliefs, and we make our experiences become real. We'll see if you agree with that. If not, you can help me out and tweak this with me. This is also a time for me that I think about we're in a time of transition as a church, as individuals, when we look around us, we're in a time of transition. You know, we just finished Thanksgiving and, you know, we went through Black Thursday, Friday, and here we are. We're about to embark into Advent. From my traditional Christian background, Advent is real important to me. It's not the only time that I think that we're called in to think about who we are, reflect on that, but the metaphysical meaning of Christmas is new birth, a hopefulness to increase our willingness, our desire, our awareness, to become transformed into something new, something perhaps that's been stirring within us to become that, to grow. So I'm inviting you in this morning to the story of the Velveteen Rabbit. A story of bravery, of vulnerability, a story of hope. Jeremiah wrote to the people, saying that we are promised a future of hope. The Lord said, he said, the Lord said, I have plans for you to prosper you, to give you a future. Let's go to the story. The Velveteen Rabbit. Anyone who's read it, what's it about? Give a hand. Hmm? Hope and being who you think you are. What else is it about? For those of you who don't know, it's about a little boy who at Christmas time receives all these wonderful toys and then receives what? A stuffed rabbit that can't do anything. So he, you know, plays with it a little bit and then it's like, Ugh, discard it. Look at all these other wonderful toys to play with the rabbit begins to feel really bad. You know, not good enough. Because what's it doing? It's comparing itself to everybody else, all the other toys. It's lost. It's beginning to feel ashamed. I'm not good enough. Inside, though, that rabbit is longing for something, wants something. 
there's one toy in the whole nursery or the whole playroom that befriends the little rabbit. It's the skin horse. The skin horse and the rabbit begin to talk. And one day, in one of their conversations, the rabbit says, the rabbit asks the skin horse, what is real? Asked the skin horse. Does it mean having that buzz inside of you? Do you glow? Do you have something that sticks out of you that winds up? Oh, no, said the skin horse. Real isn't how you're made. It's that thing that happens to you, that thing that happens around you, with you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, then you become real. By the time you're real, most of your hair has been loved off and you get shabby. I suppose you're real then, said the rabbit to the skin horse. Oh, yes, said the skin horse. The boy's uncle made me real a long time ago. And once you're real, you cannot become unreal again. It lasts for always. You and I are created in God's image. We have that spark of realness within us that no matter what happens, it can't go away. It's there always. To highlight this and the story, I went to, did some research, of course, some studying, and Tony Raffino D'Antoni has written a book called The Velveteen Rabbit, The Velveteen Principles, A Guide to Becoming Real. Tony describes the difference between living in the land of objects with all those gizmos and gadgets and being real. She says, once we accept the pervasive message of the object culture that we should be perfect, we start to feel shamefully inadequate. We feel less than. It's a struggle to find out who we are. My friends Marvel Harrison and Terry Kellogg would say we get bumped off our path sometimes because we get sidetracked, you know, we get caught up in all the things we're supposed to be because we're bombarded with it from images from TV and, and advertisements, wherever we are. Something can be new and improved of who we're supposed to be. And yet not one of us can attain, attain that object status. No matter what we buy, no matter what we wear, no matter how we smell, we're still who we are. But when we're off that path, we tumble around. We may condemn ourselves. We may feel shame. We may isolate. We may try to ease the pain through acquiring more objects or through power or drugs or sex or food or purchases or whatever it is that only leads us further away from who we really are. Just think about your own process. And this may be speaking more for me, so I hope, it's, hope this resonates in some way with you. But abandoning your real self. You let go of a dream here. You let go of a dream there. Ah, you let go of a thought. You let this pass. But then it's like there's something missing. There's something inside of you that is feeling those losses. And hopefully we brush against people that, you know, kind of hold that up to us, that something's missing. And we feel that little inkling, that urge. And it taps into that core of who we really are. And we want to be real. We want to be real. Tony says in her book, Real is possible. That's the very first principle. It is possible. And we know that inside. We may not always feel it because of other things going on, but it really is possible. When we think about the Velveteen Rabbit, his little heart was so real. He had the potential, and he undertook developing the qualities to make himself real. The second is that real is a process. You know, when we look at advertisements and things like that, 
what is it? Those people are real. They look good all the time. They're perfect. And if we start that comparison, what happens? We miss that we're on a process. We're on a journey. The skin horse told the rabbit, it takes time. That's why it doesn't happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. We begin to become real when we begin the process of discovering and defining and redefining who we really are. Real becomes as we grow and mature. Real is emotional. When we're real, we honor our feelings and we express them. We don't deny them. Some of us grew up in homes that feelings were not allowed. You know, in our society, we see a lot of smiles and advertisement that everything's fine, but what are our feelings? We don't stuff our feelings and we don't project them onto others. We become aware of our emotions. We learn to respect and to appreciate our own feelings, and the feelings of others. That's not being impulsive. It's being authentic when we're able to express our feelings. The fourth principle is that real is empathetic. The the mechanical toys in the nursery had a very hard time relating to the feelings and the needs of the other toys. They had a feeling of being better than They had a consistent need to be superior. They hid their real feelings. They were perhaps so out of touch with their feelings, they didn't know their feelings. Their missing paint and broken parts, their lack of perfection, created such an insecurity that came out as judgment on others. In contrast, the skinned horse who had lost his hair had been sewn and re-sewn, was comfortable just being the skin horse. The fifth principle is courage. Real is courageous. Brene Brown wrote that courage is telling who you are with your whole heart, your whole being. Real feels the fear and does it anyway. Real is willing to take risk. Real does the right thing, even when it's not popular. Real knows failures and errors and knows that those lead to growth. Courage comes with experience. The sixth principle is honest. The only toy in the nursery or the playroom who was honest, who told the truth, was the skinned horse. He liked who he was. He was comfortable being himself. We don't get to hear his journey, but we know that in his journey as he was and talking with the rabbit, he didn't pretend to be anything else. Principle seven, real is being generous. Real expresses a spirit of goodwill an encouragement, a generosity of spirit. Real supports others joyfully and is affirming. When we're real, we understand that there's enough to go around so we don't hold back or block our skills. We live in a society that wants us to think that there's a scarcity. It goes back to being courageous, to go against the grain, to believe that there is enough. You know, the song, Love is Like a Magic Penny, you know, What happens if we give it away, we have more. If we hold on to it, it gets stifled. Real looks for win-win solutions. Real understands the law of giving, the law of abundance. Real knows that sharing our light doesn't diminish it. Rather, it allows our light to shine even brighter. Real understands that we are all one, that we are inherently connected to one another. That makes generosity natural and even logical. Eighth principle, real is grateful. Reverend Vell talked with us about gratitude. Gratitude flows when we are able to focus on the positive instead of the negative. 
developing an attitude of gratitude opens our eyes to the beauty around us, all the infinite possibilities around us. Real associates gratitude with awareness and appreciation. It takes time to be aware of ourself, time to be aware of our surroundings, to observe our lives and the lives of others. Gratitude is a gateway to grace. Ninth principle, real can be painful. As the skin horse explained to the Valentine rabbit, sometimes being real is scary. Sometimes it hurts. The more we are open and vulnerable, the more of a chance we have to be hurt. And yet through that vulnerableness are some of the most powerful lessons to become real, to grow, to trust ourselves enough to continue to take risk, to continue to learn and to grow. Being real means that we keep looking, that we're willing to accept ourselves and others, warts and all. We start to care more about contributing, of being of service, like the song. It's about service. It's about our doors coming open. Real goes with the flow. Real understands that change does not equal disaster. Change is natural. Change does not mean we failed. Change understands that change is necessary for growth. Principle 11 perhaps underlying all of them, is that real love endures. Don Miguel Ruiz in The Mastery of Love says, we can talk about love, we can write a thousand books about it, and yet love will be completely different for each one of us. We have to experience love. Love is not about concepts, it's about action. Love in action produces happiness. Last principle, love is ethical. The process of becoming real eventually makes us calmly content with who we are as individuals and with others. It means we no longer feel overwhelmed or that self-condemnation or the shame or the disgust. We are comfortable being human beings. We are able to act according to our highest good, our highest value. It's living with our integrity. It may be also called doing, talking, wait, (laughs) walking our talk, that it's matching. Our inside and outside is consistent with who we are. Real understands that our actions have consequences. They have a ripple effect. It's contagious in a healthy way when we're real. Real happens when we are willing to see that we are exactly as God created us to be. We stop apologizing for who we are and we embrace ourselves individually and as one another. When we become real, our talk begins to match our walk. We trust ourselves to know about letting others in, about letting our feelings out. We also begin to recognize and accept relationships with other people, regardless of race, color, gender, religious. We accept one another and see the beauty as God has created each one of us. When, we're re- when we are real, it's going to be a tongue twister, when we are real, we are vulnerable. We know the truth about ourselves and one another. We don't hide that. We are made in God's image. We are genuine. We no longer want to pretend. Tony speaks, and after the rabbit became real, the velveteen rabbit looked upon the world with quiet wisdom. We are choir when we have grown enough and learned enough to understand what really fulfills and sustains us as unique individuals. To put it another way, we know what gives us true value and true meaning. This is the ultimate goal we reach as mature, as real people, as people in a process of becoming real. Real life demands your participation. It doesn't happen to you. You design it. You co-create.
co-created with our Creator. It means that you are willing to grow, learning to live through your experiences, learning to know that you did your best and you will continue to do your best. You don't beat yourself up when a mistake is made. You learn from it. You share it. Going back to the meditation about being real. Not to put anybody on the spot. What kind of container did you select for yourself when you had the chance to take some water? Did you take a container of water? Yes? You had a cup? <laughs> Hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Others? Coffee. coffee. You had a coffee, a coffee container? Okay. Okay. Was it a big cup? Was it a little cup? Plastic bag. A plastic baggie. Okay. Did anybody not take water? And you don't have to answer. Okay. The image of that cup, and I like this meditation because it talks about what are we willing to give ourselves? You know, do we deny our feelings like, wow, that water tasted really good, but oh no, I can't take any of that. I'm not good enough, or I don't need it, or what would I do with it? You know, we back off. What if we take that water? And what kind of container do we take? You know, is it held precious in a fancy little porcelain teacup? Is it in a plastic bag? Is it in a coffee cup? What is it? Are we willing to take some of that water? You know, do we share it with others? What is it? Real is who we are, getting in touch with our coreness. Going back to the story, the Velveteen Rabbit kind of went through two, perhaps three experiences and that process of becoming real. First was in the nursery. Wanted to become real. Wanted to be like the others. And couldn't. Because it wasn't made that way. And when the little boy played with the rabbit, he takes him out amongst the other rabbits. And the other rabbits that are real outside are just like, ooh, you're not one of us. But that didn't stop the little rabbit. It still stayed. T that's part of that trust, knowing who he really was. So when he finally, unfortunately, is released from the little boy through a sad situation of the boy's health, a fairy comes to visit him and grants him to become real. He's again with the other rabbits. And he starts to wiggle and all that, and he becomes real. He stayed true to knowing that his core being, his connection to his higher power, however we want to embrace it and express it, was there. It needed to come forth. Is our time now, individually, corporately, to live through the transition, to live through Advent, meditating on our hopes, our manifestations, for ourselves, our family, our church, our community? Let us be real. Let us say, I am real. One, two, three. I'm real. <laughs> Thank you. So it is.